Hello my friends, uh, this is Alex Volskov and welcome back to Agile Studio. Today uh, I'm showing you how to uh, how we use uh, focus stacking in our macro photography. On a focus stacking you do several shots of uh, one subject and then you combine them together. But the difference between each shot is where we have focus point on that object. Uh, why we need it? You know, in product photography, in jewelry photography, uh, it's very, sometimes, and I would say most of times, it's very important to get the whole uh, subject in the focus. Uh, usually, we just close the, the aperture, right? Close it down to increase depth of field. Uh, but uh, it, it's not possible sometimes to get the whole thing even with closed aperture. Plus, uh, the diffraction works against us, so uh, depends on the lens, there is a limit till we can close the uh, aperture, uh, but still getting the nice quality images. After that limit, uh, the thing gets blurry and we lose the contrast, uh, we lose details. So, that's where our focus stacking can help us. Uh, there are two ways to, to move focus uh, through the object. One, which is not right, by the way, uh, to change a focusing point by uh, adjusting the lens focus. And, uh, but the correct way to do it uh, is to move a uh, camera towards the subject or backward, depends on where focus is, to move focusing point. What do we need for focus stacking? This is a macro focusing rails. You can move the camera by rotating this uh, micrometric uh, dial or how you call it. Uh, so we can have very 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 uh, small adjustments of the position camera uh, to the subject. You see the camera is connected uh, to the macro rail, macro focusing rail and uh, it's very easy to move by turning those dials we can move camera uh, let's go to the lighting setup uh, and uh, to the, our subject uh, we have only two light sources one on the left side and one on the back a softbox it's a strip uh, softbox our bracelet is actually uh, hidden under two foam boards. One is completely white on that side and one is gray. And our main light source, which is this light, is not directly hitting the bracelet. Instead, it's highlighting area in front of it and the side uh, reflect, uh, diffuser reflector, how you call it, the gray one. Why I use a gray? Uh, gray is kind of, it, it can be white or it can be black, depends on how high light. No light, it will be black. More light, it will be almost white. But the gray, it's easier to get uh, the light and fall off from the that spot, so it's faster gets to darker areas. Why I need so? Our bracelet is a silver, and it's not just a, like white silver. It has these flowers, and uh, the flowers is uh, kind of darkish a little bit. So I need to be sure it will show the actual uh, color of the bracelet. So we have a light here, which highlights this area, and we have one light there, right? It just highlights back and it also, both lights get reflected by this uh, reflector, so uh, it's mostly like huge softbox. Why huge? Because uh, comparing to the size of the subject, it's, it's big and everything gets reflected. We have a very even uh, soft uh, spread of light. Okay, let's start shooting. Aperture is set to f11. Uh, 
For this lens, for 180mm Canon F uh, 3.5 macro lens, uh, F11 is a sweet spot. Basically, it's a sweet spot somewhere between F8 and F16 on that lens. Uh, meaning, I will get the maximum resolution, the maximum details uh, from, from the lens on that range of uh, aperture. Uh, as we see, I got in the focus the very, very uh, front of the bracelet, which is that uh, ring. The rest is getting blurry, blurry, and even more blurry. So, let's move camera to the next point. Of Okay, now we got this piece in the focus. The ring is still in, but we slowly moving focus toward the end of the bracelet. One more. Okay, this what I believe to be the last shot. We have the last piece of the bracelet in the focus. And the rest is really blurred. And now we can start stitching it together. Uh, we got uh, all our images, 12 images selected. And it's in bridge, right? Uh, we go tools. Photoshop, photo merge. Uh, Photoshop CS5 extended. I'm not sure if its regular version uh, has the same uh, feature. Maybe yes, maybe not. Truly, I don't know. So it gets loaded. And uh, now it gets some time to load those uh, megabytes of image. And we use Auto. We unselect blend images together, and as you see, we have all 12 images here, which we selected in uh, in the bridge. So I just click OK. Now uh, it loads uh, all those images into the one file on the different layers. That's what happening here. You see, next image appears as a new layer of the file. All right, we have our image. Now we need to select all of the layers and go to Edit Auto Blend Layers, right? And we just select Stack Images. Not a panorama, but stuck images. Okay. We got our image. And now we can take a look at the whole image. The cool thing that it's not just stuck in focus. Because uh, we have uh, like 12 images. We probably may do only five, but I did 12 to get that extra details, extra resolution on the image. And you see how cool it looks. Every tiny detail is in focus.